Hi everyone, my name is Jason. Uh, welcome to my channel. I um, wanted to put up a, an intro video uh, about uh, what I plan on doing and you know what I'm using here. Um, the whole purpose of this video series is to try to uh, share my experiences on living in a camper full time on the back of a truck. I'm going to be relocating to a new area, buying a piece of land, homesteading, and uh, hope to have a bunch of people join me on the way, maybe give me some ideas, help me out as I, you know, maybe give other people ideas as well. So let's uh, go ahead and get to it, uh, do it, you know, let everybody know what I'm going to be living in here. Alright, so here we have a 1999 F-350 flatbed truck, uh, has a 12 foot flatbed on it, uh, Triton V10 engine, uh, two wheel drive unfortunately, but uh, they do have some, some decent tires on it. I'm actually going to be doing a review here in a little while, maybe in a few months. These are retread tires. They're from uh, from a company called All. Um, uh, geez, what are these called? Uh, tread Right tires. And they're the Warden Two. That's what they call them. They have the same tread pattern as the BF Goodrich All Terrain TAs. Um, they're like a hundred and twenty a piece. You know, so far they're not that bad, but. I'll do a review on them, you know, here in you know a few months, maybe this fall. It's just after Labor Day, right? Or uh, Memorial Day, I'm sorry. Right now, and uh, there's the truck. Uh, the camper is a 1973 Weekender, uh, nine foot. Uh, as you can see, the camper is a lot smaller than the bed is, so I took this opportunity to enclose this whole area here for storage it's what I call my basement uh, all the stuff that my lady and I own are going to be there's going to be going into it <coughs> for you know the trip and the one or two years that we're going to be living in here that's where all of our stuff's going to be and outside of the camper here you got a couple of here let me get out of the sun, see if I can, there's a bush right here, so it might not be, there we go, uh, got the uh, front window over there is for the bedroom, this one here is for the dining area, uh, that tiny window up there is for a little loft area where the, uh, there's like a cabinet back there that folds down, uh, I just made it into a permanent cabinet, it doesn't fold down anymore, but uh, this little uh, door right here gives you access to the uh, controls for the shower uh, this one's for the bathroom sink and the back of the water heater this is just a little storage compartment I have a spare old propane tank in there I need to exchange it for a new one uh, there's the water heater you can get in there and light it up it's a propane water heater weekend or camper uh, this bathroom window, and there's the door. This here is where I keep the sewage tank hose to dump the sewage. And there you have the regular propane tank for the stove and the water heater. Uh, this side over here is closed in as well. Uh, and there's the gray water tank it sits in there uh, this is the back side of the cupboard where food storage is you know for um, box food and a bunch of canned food stuff like that and there's the rest of the basement uh, there's the kitchen window a uh, hood vent for the stove that's where the factory uh, refrigerator was 
Uh, it's no longer there. You'll see inside when we get in there where, what I did with it. Below that was a factory furnace. Uh, it never worked. So I pulled that out pretty quickly. Right now that's just a, a vent for the uh, wood stove that I have in there. Uh, get some airflow around it. Try to keep the area cool around it. You know, try to keep it from, you know, catching wood on fire, the camper itself. And then there's the front bedroom window. Um, this side over here in the truck, there's a little storage box right there, a locking one. There's my uh, shore power, a little concoction myself. This here goes to a, uh, a battery charger. And charge my batteries when I plug in. I plug these two in together. And then this right here, this side here goes to the AC inside. This goes to the outlets. And this right here comes from the power inverter. So whenever I need to plug in externally, I just unplug this, plug it into an extension cord or whatever I need to do. <coughs> and there you have it. Uh, truck and camper. Let's go ahead and go inside. That's uh, the one inside here. It's pretty high off the ground, so got to use a step stool, step ladder here. So you have to use that to get up inside. <coughs> on the other truck it was on, it was low enough. I didn't have to have that, but it's a different setup. Uh, over here I have the readouts for my uh, solar panels. The top one there is power coming in. It's a cloudy day right now, typical Oregon. So there's the voltage coming in and the amperage. No power coming in for amperage. This is the uh, reading on the batteries. I have two golf cart batteries, 225 amp hour batteries. And this is the amperage of how much power I'm using, you know, I can, you know, turn on the water pump and you'll see it come on here. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see. It goes back off as soon as I turn the switch off for the water pump. Uh, typical little closet here. Got some clothes. Did a bunch of insulating here. I just started getting it, you know, got it ready for the winter bunch of styrofoam insulation. I got all that for free from work. It's packing materials. Um, you see here's the solar charge controller. I have a, a Wanderer. The whole kit is a 200 watt starter kit from Renergy. And then on the inside here, can't really see it. I have another charge controller there. I have a set of Harbor Freight panels, all 45 watts. They're supposed to be decent because they are supposed to work better in overcast days than a standard one would. But to be honest, for the price, I just rather would have gotten another 100 watt solar panel and spent a little bit extra money. Here's my power inverter. I believe it's a 750 watt power inverter. And I have it there all wired in. It's got the plug right here. This plug goes to the camper itself. It powers my, you know, any 120 volt appliances. I have a regular refrigerator in there, so that's uh, powering mainly it. There's my batteries themselves, kind of ugly wiring. You have to go through and redo that eventually. There's the inside of the propane area. You saw it on the outside there, on the door on the side. Close this. Go directly across from it. And we have the restroom. Now this is the reason why I got this particular style camper. Go ahead and turn on the light there is it has a full shower. It has a regular toilet, or RV toilet I should say. There's the drain for the shower itself. Got some dirt down here. 
I just try to clean it up a little bit. Um, little tray there for you know, toothpaste, toothbrush, whatever. Got some hand soap, air freshener, always handy in a small space like a little camper. Uh, typical sink, and there's the shower head, shower setup. Now when I first got this, up here, there's a little valve. You can push it one way or the other and it's supposed to stop the flow of water. Well, this valve never closed completely, so the pump would constantly run. And, you know, since I have a limited amount of water, that is not good. So I went to Jerry's, just installed this valve here, which completely shuts off the water. And for those of you who don't know this, the reason why they do this is so you can preserve water, you can set your hot and cold to the right temperature that you like. You know, you take a shower, you get wet, you turn it off, you can go ahead and soap up while you're not using any water, and turn this back on just to rinse off, and it's already set at the temperature you like. So, it's a really handy feature. Uh, I got this, so you put a shampoo bottle or whatever, little strap there holding it in a couple little hooks for you know like rags or washcloths or something Got one there one up there a couple of washcloth little rails there now all these lights throughout the camper actually changed out they used to be incandescent but I don't know how well you can see that but the little LED light strips, I picked those up on eBay for a dollar for, I think it was uh, five meters, They're made in China, They'll come in a roll, and I just soldered them to the regular plug and got some plugs here. And so I can unplug them if I need to and replace a strip if one burns out. We got the uh, Regular shower curtain. Come in here, close the shower curtain, take a shower, open it up. And another thing, there's a couple of uh, pipes that ruptured. They have this weird patch that I saw at Jerry's, figured they'd give it a try, and it seems to work. The uh, person that owned it before me didn't seem like they took very good care of the camper and left water in the pipes. And some of the pipes ended up bursting. So I'm not very good at soldering or anything like that, copper pipe, so I tried that. And it's working so far, so we're leaving it. And I see a little toilet paper holder here for the toilet. A couple more towel rags. You have one towel here that just stays here, and it gets put on the ground when you step out so you're not just dripping water everywhere. Another one, uh, this one will probably go down here, but uh, another one for whatever towel you use to dry off. Uh, you can hang clothes, whatever. Got this little hook there. Turn the light off there. Got another hook there for hanging up your jackets and whatnot. Alright, and up here, uh, this never came with a, an entry light, you know, anywhere in this area, and I thought it'd be handy to have one, so I got a little switch here. Turn on another strip of LEDs. So you got a couple out over there. But this is enough to light up the entryway, get off your shoes, hang your jacket up, and all that. Fire extinguisher, very important. Um, so you're in here. We have dishes, food, more dishes. That's the uh, breaker and just one breaker for the whole camper for the 120 another strip of LEDs here um, from the factory I don't know if you can see the outline here where it's faded or dirty that's where the factory um, fluorescent light was and I took that out because it wasn't working and it was getting full of water from water leaks uh, this here uh, this used to be one of those roof vents that you just crank up and uh, you know let light in and whatnot. It used to be white, but it was cracked and 
there's leaks all around it so I took it out to eliminate that as being a possible leak for the camper uh, you can see in the corner there there's one of my solar panels uh, this is just extra ceiling foam um, this here is a patch panel I will be fixing that up so it's not just big and ugly I had to pull down part of the ceiling to track where another water leak is coming from it came from back over in this area Okay, so over here we have uh, towels, blankets, all my clothes, my ladies' clothes are going to be in here as well. Uh, I got deodorant, medicine bottles, stuff like that go there. I guess I keep the medicine cabinet. Uh, and here's my fridge. Uh, it's just a regular, it's about a four, or four and a half cubic foot fridge. Put some more insulation on this, try to make it a little bit more efficient on the side there. <coughs> a little chair. Now, if you didn't guess already, this is not where the fridge is supposed to go. It didn't go there from the factory. You put it there, modified one of the cushions so you can still sit there. A uh, little cap box. A uh, little five gallon bucket used for a garbage can. And table, obviously. Still kind of working on sorting this thing out. Uh, there was an access to the storage area down below. And down here there are water tanks. This is where the factory, uh, I believe, was a 30 gallon water tank was. 30 or 40 gallon, but it had multiple cracks in it, so. I pulled it out. I got three seven gallon water tanks, and all I did was just take the hose going from the pump and put it to this tank here. And as each tank empties out, we put it into the next one. It gives us 21 gallons altogether, which is fine. Fill it up a couple times a week, and that's enough for us. Even with taking showers, put this back down. Uh, this used to be the, well, it still is the window. On a normal truck, this would be right there at the back of the pickup cab. And you can see into the pickup cab or, you know, for somebody from the front can see back this way. But um, I put more insulation there to just, well, obviously insulate it. Uh, over here, this is where the factory heater used to be. Uh, I never got it to work in the first place. I have a buddy heater. It runs on little green propane tanks that uh, you use for heat when you need it from that. Uh, right now it's just a little area for pots and pans. Put this in here just to hold them. And this is the new source of heat. I uh, did some wheeling dealing for this as well. This is a little wood stove. You know, it's not that big, and it's I figure about a, a foot across and somewhere around 18 inches deep. A little racks up here if you want to cook something. You know, little tubes on each side for I don't know baked potatoes or something like that. The um, tile I got for free from my work. They had two boxes left over from uh, flooring. And, you know, blue and tan. Blue obviously went from the bottom on the back. And then the tan I did both sides. And I just did them with um, liquid nails because I wanted to be able to you know, repair them, replace them easily if I needed to. You know, if they came off, if they broke. Uh, they've been on for a little over a month now and all the bouncing and everything with this truck does. We seem to be doing just fine. And I got a little rock collection back in there. Not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. Uh, I do have a section of the stove pipe that's wrapped in copper tubing. This is the copper tubing that originally went to the factory heater down here and the propane refrigerator that was in this area. 
uh, I decided, you know, if I'm not going to have these two things here, then I might as well pull the propane lines out just for safety reasons. And then I can also use them wrap around this stove pipe and I'm going to be pumping either just plain water or antifreeze through them and uh, it'll warm up the water and I'll pipe it throughout the entire camper you know along all the water lines so that none of the pipes will freeze during the winter time let's move on over here <coughs> there you have a little three burner propane stove and oven you know it's not very big can't cook a turkey in there but you know maybe do a few pieces of chicken or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't think a whole chicken would fit in there. Uh, when I got it, uh, the handle was missing. So I just put a couple little attachments there and a piece of dowel going across. Works fine as a handle. And down below, I have storage for food. I got a lot of canned food in there. And, uh, looks like you got some macaroni and cheese, some chili, uh, more insulation. The whole area in there is insulated as well to keep it from freezing. Uh, I've got uh, four just miscellaneous drawers, and a spatula, and that kind of stuff. <coughs> and down here is kind of a junk drawer, uh, more miscellaneous stuff. This drawer here was broken, so I put a couple of hinges on there and still get in there, some cleaning supplies. And down here, another insulated. This is not accessible because, I don't know if a lot of you people know this, but uh, typical truck campers do not have gray water tanks, so I had to adapt a uh, old fuel tank from the old truck that was supposed to be on here, or that was that the camper was on, and so I'm using a fuel tank for the gray water tank, and that's what's back in there. So hand towels there, standard sink, you know it's decent size, good enough to do all the dishes in we need. Have a little cover here as well as a cutting board. Here we have the bedroom area. Uh, it's got a three inch, about a three inch memory foam pad here. Uh, Milady and I spent about six months last year living in here, and this memory foam pad was absolutely wonderful. A little backpack there, uh, shelving for books, got another one of those straps right there to hold books in on the bottom there. And let's see here. Get up here. Up here this is the same kind of vent that is supposed to be over there. Just the kind of where you just grab it and crank it up, and get some fresh air in here. You know, screen to keep the bugs out. And here's another one of those incandescent lights. I disconnected the bulb, but I still have it here so that nobody catches their hair or head or anything on the socket. Uh, it did not come with a shade around it when we bought it. So eventually this hole is going to go away. I'm just going to have a plastic cover there. And the switch for it I have hooked up to... Uh, indirect lighting, mood lighting, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty neat. On both sides, you can see there's another air conditioner. All right, there's a little homemade rope to hold back the curtain we have here. You see, I got it all wired in in this conduit and everything. Doesn't look the best, but the wire's protected and nobody's gonna catch on it or anything. Turn that off. And then because of uh, water leaks and stuff, you know, this whole area didn't look that good. It was wooden, you know, wood colored. Uh, my lady wanted it 
painted so it got painted purple it's not that big a deal to me I don't really care it's you know a bedroom uh, over here that used to be a 120 volt lamp but it started getting all rusted out and you know there's incandescent bulb for 120 volts I have to run the power inverter just to get power to it so instead I just put in the indirect lights and put a wall socket right there it works well enough oh and she put up this sticker it says be your own kind of beautiful I think that's pretty neat and the drapes this used to be a cover for a futon that I have so we took the material cut it to size and then it goes across the whole front and same thing there it's got material there and on the other side as well all right we'll go back out here I did mention that this did not come with a gray water tank so we'll go around here to the side and show you what I have set up here uh, for those of you who already know or are familiar with RVs this is where the black water comes out this is where you empty your tanks there's the black water tank that's the toilet tank but what I have going on here is on this side that is where the gray water empties out of the sink and the shower and it just ends up right here not a whole lot of room for water to build up for storage you know no no tank or anything it's just pipes so what I did is I put a hole in this little cap up front and this one right here is just a cap it's garden hose sized and I got some 3 8 inch tubing took it around to an inline filter that you would have for you know just regular like garden hose I'm not sure what they'd be filtering out sediment or whatever but I have it for like food particles you know whatever so it doesn't clog up the pump that I have and it goes around here to the pump you can get a better look at that but there's the pump then the pump pumps it up through this hose and there's the fuel tank from the old Chevy truck that I had that's uh, 18 gallons and it does the job and just have a little spigot there to drain the water from the wastewater and to help it, I have it hooked up to this hose and it goes to another pump, a little utility pump. And I just took that uh, clamp right there to that wire that's hanging and it turns it on. There's the other part there, it's already grounded out to a bolt and it just helps pump out water from there. Just hook that up to another garden hose. And it takes something that would take, you know, 45 minutes and cuts it down to about 15 minutes. So I'm not going to complain about that. Now, one thing I did forget to mention, I uh, wanted to apologize for the quality of this video. I'm currently using a cheap knockoff of a cheap knockoff of a GoPro. Uh, it only records in 480. Uh, it advertises 1080p and it's one of those $20 you know action cameras you see on uh, eBay but um, you know, until I know exactly if this is going to take off and people are going to like my videos uh, this is what I'm going to use I have entered a couple of contests to get different cameras something that's better but this is what I'm going to use now switch off between this and my cell phone camera depending on the need and you know the video quality between the two all right so um, hope you enjoyed this uh, introductory video hope I'm putting up uh, quite a few more videos hopefully you'll get some enjoyment out of all this